Hello, it is uh, 9 p.m. in RTD. It's time to English New Edition for uh, tonight's headlines. We have. Uh... The President of the Republic uh, arrives uh, for Johannesburg. For the international scene, uh, global warming has created much more favorable conditions for fires in Quebec. Welcome to our newsroom. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Omar Ghele, arrived this afternoon in Johannesburg, South Africa, to take part in the BRICS Africa Summit. On his arrival at the Johannesburg Oliver Tambo International Airport, the President was welcomed by the senior South African officials, including South Africa's Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ms. Naledi Pandor, the BRICS Africa Summit, a major event, is an opportunity to forge a strong and lasting partnership. It aims uh, to uh, create a solid platform for cooperation between BRICS member countries and Africa, with a view to fostering economic growth, stability, and sustainable development in Africa and within BRICS. Uh, the summit will also consider applications from countries that have expressed interest in joining the BRICS. Uh, this summit will bring together for the first time, the BRICS member countries, China, Russia, India, Brazil, South Africa, and with several African leaders, including the President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Omar Ghele, who is uh, heading a strong ministerial delegation, including the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, uh, the Djibouti Ambassador to U United Nations and Permanent Representative uh, of Djibouti to the United Nations, Mohamed Ziad uh, Douale, and the Kenyan Ambassador to Djibouti, Yassin al mibouh and the President Diplomatic Advisor, Hafadhiya Jama'uddin, sharing a common interest in economic uh, development, political stability, and strengthening the role of emerging countries in world affairs. Uh, Africa and the BRICS will address uh, a number of topics on summit uh, agenda, on the summit agenda, including economic cooperation and ways of boosting trade and investment between the BRICS countries and Africa. Hassan Musa Hassan, a young Djiboutian businessman living in Johannesburg, is at the head of the company known by, by many Somali uh, restaurant owners for its uh, motivation. Today, Hassan is the, at the head of uh, the company with several employees. For more details, uh, here is a report with Dini Musa. Originally from Djibouti, Hassan started small as a supplier of meats to local restaurants. It was in his native country that he shaped the first stones of his career. Twelve years ago, he decided to make a first start by moving to Johannesburg. Armed with courage and determination, he set out to supply rice to restaurants in the city. Gradually, his business flourished, paving the way for new opportunities. The turning point in his career came when Hassan decided to start supplying gas for restaurants. Every morning, his team is busy meeting the gas needs of the city's uh, culinary establishments. His reputation within the Somali community of Johannesburg naturally opened doors for him, and he was able to earn the trust of his clients. Hassan quickly evolved by creating his own commercial sign. In addition to being a gas importer, he ventured into the field of general food. His distribution company now serves nearly 200 restaurants and hundreds of families, employing a permanent team of about 10 agents and another 100 on an intermittent basis. His business empire is in full expansion. Today, Hassan Djibouti is a role model and inspiration, not only to the Somali community in Johannesburg, but also to young aspiring entrepreneurs. His ultimate dream is to return to his native country, Djibouti, to invest there and replicate the same success he enjoyed in South Africa. 
Hassan Djibouti's story is living proof that his determination, courage, and vision can transform lives. He was able to reinvent himself and build a prosperous business empire. His journey is an inspiring example for anyone who aspires to achieve their dreams, showing that opportunities are never out of reach for those who dare to take the plunge. <laughs> The summit of emerging BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, opened in Johannesburg on Tuesday with the expansion of the bloc, uh, which aims uh, to extend its global political and economic influence at the center of discussions. Uh, some 14 nations uh, have uh, applied for membership on expressing or expressed interest in joining the Club of Five, uh, which produces a quarter of the world's wealth and is home to 42 percent of the world's population among the aspirants uh, are Iran, Argentina, Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, Russia is uh, represented in Johannesburg by its uh, foreign minister. Vladimir Putin, who is uh, under an international arrest warrant uh, in connection with Ukraine, spoke at the summit on Tuesday online uh, via a recorded video me message. In his message to the leaders of the BRICS group, the Russian uh, president said via video conference that his country uh, would ship up, up to uh, 50,000 tons of grain to six African countries free of the charge, including delivery the bloc made up of uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa is holding its first face-to-face -face meeting since before the COVID-19 pandemic. Russia will also be represented in person by its uh, foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. The Prime Minister and Acting Head of Government, Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, uh, this morning received an ALESCO delegation led by the Minister of Youth and Culture, Dr. Hiba Mumin Asoui. At the head of this strong delegation are two international experts, Dr. Fathi Al Jare and Dr. Abdul Hadi Al Ghamari. The delegation is in Djibouti for the first regional meeting in the framework of the project for the collective inscriptions of uh, traditions and customs linked to the traditional marriage in Arab countries uh, on uh, UNESCO's universal uh, uh, registers by March 2024. The Prime Minister and Head of Government, Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, uh, the Acting Head of Government, Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, uh, I welcome Djibouti's choice to host this meeting of the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, which works under the ages of the Arab League to promote, develop and coordinate member states. The ALESCO delegation briefed by the Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed on the first meeting between the various parties, in addition to the Republic of Djibouti and the Republic of Comoros and Somalia, are invited to this meeting. The meeting took place in the presence of the Secretary General of the Prime Minister Office, Nagib Abdullah Mohammed Kamil and the senior advisors uh, to the ministers of youth and culture, uh, Mr. Idris Musa. The Djiboutians uh, who benefit uh, from this year's uh, Mandela Fellowship, uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship, uh, shared th their experience at, the, at an event alongside cultural and press attaché David uh, Kisling from U.S. Embassy in Djibouti. These uh, former participants, uh, as well as those from previous year, discussed their journey and the lessons learned in the USA during the leadership programs in, for in front of an audience of uh, enthusiastic young people keen to participate in the programs next year. So lively questions and answers sessions provided uh, by a deeper understanding of the various aspects uh, of uh, fellowship as well as uh, leadership. Uh, the discussion has provided an authentic uh, insight uh, into these unique opportunities, reinforcing the interest and preparations of the future coordinated the event, not only inspired but also reinforced the commitment to personal development and international collaboration. Please note that the uh, closing dates uh, to apply for the 2024 Mandela Fellowship uh, is September 12, 2023. And uh, in his speech, uh, the press uh, attaché, cultural attaché of the embassy, U.S. Embassy in Djibouti said, I am delighted to be here to uh, to today to talk uh, about you, the Mandela F Washington Fellowship. Listen for more details. I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about the Mandela Washington Fellowship, the flagship program of the Young African Leaders Initiative. This program brings young leaders from across Sub-Saharan Africa to the United States for six weeks of leadership and development training and it culminates 
and a summit in Washington, D.C., bringing all 700 young African leaders together to network and then take their experiences back home to their home countries to better their communities. Applications are open now through September 12th, and I encourage all young leaders to apply. The prefect of uh, Tajura Region, Mohamed Hamad Abbas, visited the construction site of the future Tajura Regional Hospital, accompanied by uh, the sub-prefect uh, Habib Jilani. On his arrival at the site, he was welcomed by the chief uh, medical officers of the Tajura, Dr. Uh, Dimbio, the regions and engineers from the Chinese companies in charge of construction. The prefect was briefed on the progress of the work, and uh, he took a towers of uh, the various structures where he was uh, uh, able to see for himself that the work was being carried out according to a very precise plan. The main buildings will house uh, the emergency consultations and hospitalizations department as well as the various operating theater. Then there is uh, the annex buildings in which will be which will house uh, all the future hospitals logistics. Uh, this hospital is one of the flagship projects uh, dear to the President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Omar Gelli. Indeed, as part of uh, his uh, health policy, this uh, technological gem of our uh, hospitals is expected uh, to relieve uh, congestions in the northern regions. In his explanation, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Dimbio, thanked the President of the Republic for his visions and, above all, for his policy in favor of the population by opting uh, for the decentralization of uh, such high capacity infrastructure. The work, which will take, take just eight months, uh, should be, should be uh, completed in 2024 and the hospital will be delivered with all the equipment needed for its uh, operation. For his part, the prefect uh, Muhammad Ahmed Abbas expressed his satisfaction at the progress of the work and uh, emphasized the long-term benefits expected. He also emphasized the benefits of the project for local workers who have uh, the chance uh, to benefit from the project's expertise uh, while earning a salary. Uh, the prefect thanked the chosen company for their and stenting, uh, commitment to the project. He also thanked the Chinese government, a brotherly people, for this uh, priceless uh, gift. The prefect then uh, visited the temporary hospital set up under the tents. Uh, uh, the health uh, activities do not allow to the repairs, and uh, consequently, a provisional hospital was born. It is a structure for the receptionist and treatment of uh, emergencies under the enlightened guidance of the Tajaras Regionist Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Uh, Dimbio. The prefect was uh, able to get a first hand look at how. These waiting facilities work, starting with the reception services for, case, for cases uh, requiring urgent care, where doctors and nurses takes, uh, take turns uh, night and day. This was uh, followed by a visit to the uh, biological uh, analysis laboratory, where virtually all races are carried out. The prefect was honored to note the number of assessments carried out on site. He praised the efforts made by the staff uh, to ensure effective care under a, a temporary structure. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Dimbio emphasized the tireless efforts made by the Minister of Health uh, to maintain and operate the reception facilities in the operating theater. The prefect witnessed the, the ownership of the premises, the organization, and above all, a dedication of the staff to ensure optimal care for part Partners, uh, and uh, the aim uh, is to avoid the transfer of to Djibouti of people who can be carried uh, for locally. As uh, the chief medical officer reiterated lastly, the prefect reviewed the ambulances stationed to respond to all types of uh, emergency. As part of the third uh, edition uh, of the triathlon uh, scheduled in, for this weekend in Tojora, delegations from the state of secretary of in charge of sports and officials from the uh, sub-directions of uh, the Tojora held uh, a working and collaboration meeting with the city's prefect. Uh, and they were able to discuss the various modalities of cooperation, particularly with regard to security, logistics, and promotions of the event. At the internal meeting, the deputy directors of Tojora presented uh, detailed plans for the organizations of the triathlon. Team members discussed the various tasks involved in ensuring that everything 
can run smoothly on D-Day. In particular, they stress the importance of collecting garbage on the Cornish to preserve the environment and give the series a positive image. Following the meeting, the organization staff team mobilized and headed out uh, to the Cornish uh, to clean up uh, the area. Equipped with rubbish uh, bags and gloves, teams members uh, set about collecting the garbage to leave uh, a clean and pleasant environment for triathlon participants and spectators alike. Uh, the organizers uh, expressed their satisfaction with the day's uh, preparation. They are confident that the event will be well organized and hope uh, the series of Tajora arouse interests in triathlon among the major sporting event in the region. Uh, and a sport uh, returns a match second preliminary round so for the pre-qualifications of the CAF Confederation Cup, uh, Arta Solar 7, after uh, an imminent victory of the Horsey, horse, horse, the team in the first leg, second return leg, scheduled for 24-24 August uh, 2023 at 6 uh, EM Tanzania in Azam Complex. For the international scene, uh, global warming has made the extreme weather conditions for more details with Dini Musa. Global warming has made extreme weather conditions behind the raging fire season in eastern Canada this year at at least seven times more likely, according to a study published Tuesday by a network of scientists specializing in this type of fire. World weather attribution researchers have determined that climate change caused by human activity has increased the likelihood of high temperatures and low humidity levels in particular, which have played a major role in the spread of the blaze. And to close up this edition, Japan discharges of contamination water from Fukushima. Listen to Dinimusa. Japan plans to discharge more than 1.3 million M3 of water from the power plant into the sea, which melted after the March 2011 tsunami that dis devastated the country's northeast coast. Toyoko Electric Power, the operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in northeastern Japan, said on Wednesday, August 23, that it had begun final preparations for the start of the release into the Pacific Ocean of water stored on site. This is it uh, for the news. Thanks for watching us. Uh, have a good uh, evening.